So I did put out an analysis video on Enzo De Fe potentially joining Manchester United around a month or so ago, and it was one of my most viewed videos in a long time, so I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out after this video, but I thought I'd give a more critical assessment of whether Manchester United should actually sign him, given that there seems to be quite a lot of interest from the United fan base in him. At first look, the Lorient man seems to be a complete midfielder, capable of being a roaming playmaker in possession, but also an excellent defensive player in that deep midfield position as well. His close ball control, combined with his low centre of gravity, enables him to wriggle out of pressure with his nimble footwork, and that's exactly the kind of quality that United need in their build-up phase, as currently whilst Ericsson and Casemiro are two very good passers off the ball, they don't have the same turning or ball-carrying ability as players like Enzo De Fe, Maxan Kakare, Hasamawa, or Frankie De Jong. So the fame comparison to what United have at the moment in that deep midfield area would certainly be adding something that Ten Hag desperately needs. But the big issue with the Faye is whilst he is a great all-round player, does he excel in one area enough to be a Manchester United player? For example, whilst Eriksen is far from being a complete central midfielder lacking athleticism and defensive ability, as his FB Ref report shows, he is an elite level creator and ball progressor from midfield, having a great passing range and also providing the composure in central midfield that can allow him to control the pace of play. The phase certainly has a potential to be as good as Eriksen is with the ball, but at the moment I'd say that he's a level below in terms of his progressive passing and creativity in the final third. But I still think that Lefay would be an upgrade on Eriksen alongside Casemiro, because I do think Eriksen is somewhat of a liability from a defensive point of view. And whilst Lefay isn't a ball winning machine like Moses Casado, Kadio Kone or Manuel Ogarte, he's a massive improvement on Eriksen and so would improve United defensively in all thirds of the pitch being a lot better at tracking runs from deep into the box, a massive weakness of Ericsson's, whilst also being able to shuttle across and put in strong tackles when needed in the middle third. And the Faye is also a much more assertive and aggressive presser in the final third than Ericsson is something that should improve the overall efficiency of Ten Hag's press. And so when you compare Le Fay to Ericsson, it seems like a no-brainer, but you have to factor in that Ericsson, up until this season, wasn't really known for playing a deeper midfield position, and certainly not in a double pivot where he plays most prominently under Ten Hag. At Inter Milan, Ericsson was mostly played in a midfield three in a back five system, and so he had a lot of defensive protection around him, whilst under Poch at Tottenham, he was used primarily as an attacking midfielder in the line behind the forward, either from the left or starting centrally, and so he really isn't a deeper lying or roaming playmaker in the first place, in the same way that players like the Fay, Kovacic and De Jong are more naturally. But if you compare Le Fay to Kovacic or De Jong, you start to see the disparity in quality. Whilst Le Fay does rank incredibly highly, for a lot of the metrics you would want from a central midfielder, specifically he's XG assisted, he's successful take-ons, progressive carries, and carries into the final third and penalty area, where he ranks in the 90th percentile or higher, Kovacic is superior when it comes to his progressive passing, with Le Fay ranking around the 80th percentile for his progressive passes and his passes into the final third and penalty area, but Kovacic in contrast is sitting between the 88th and the 97th percentile for all of those metrics, and this supports what the eye test shows. I think the Faye is an outstanding ball carrier and creator in the final third, but right now at this stage of his career, he doesn't have the same ability to thread incisive passes into players between the lines or really control the tempo of play against the top sides in the same way that Kovacic and maybe even Ericsson but not to the same level can as well. But the Faye is still only 23 years old, and so it's only natural for him to have parts of his game that are lacking. However, I can see him developing the playmaking ability under the right manager, in the right role and right system, and so it may be worth a gamble for United to bring in Le Faye, as if he can even improve, say, 20% in all areas, he's going to be a top-level central midfielder, capable of doing everything in possession, whilst also being an effective presser, and capable of holding his own defensively in the middle of the park as well. There will obviously be some concern around his physicality with the Fey only being 5 foot 7 and being quite slight in build. However, I wouldn't be as concerned as he is coming from Ligue 1, probably the most physical top 5 league after the Premier League. And generally, I feel like players from Ligue 1 adapt to the Premier League a lot better than players coming from the Bundesliga, La Liga or Serie A. To me, the concern around the Fey is more around his adaptation period. I'm very confident that the Fey will at least be a Champions League level central midfielder by the ages of 25 and 26, but I think it may take him some time to adapt to the league. And whilst he can produce top level output in games that United control, he may not be able to have the same effect in big games just yet. And so in this case, a more experienced and trusted player like Kovacic would probably be the better option over the short term, especially. And whilst I think Le Fay would be a good alternative option for 
Ten Hag to have any squad, I don't think he's quite ready to be the Ericsson upgrade that is needed. And so personally, I think he should be third or fourth down on the list of targets, but given that he has one year left on his contract and likely will be available for between 15 and 20 million pounds, I think somewhere like Brighton or Aston Villa would be absolutely perfect for Lefay, and then maybe in 2025, 2026, he can get the big move that I think he will eventually get. 